together for morning manner. What a joy. What a delight it is to interact with you. Lord, we ain't really interested in what I got to say. But we are so desirous of what you have to say. Lord, speak like only you can. I'm just mean like newborn babes. We desire, we crave the sincere milk of the word that we may grow thereby. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I remember when Diamond was a baby and she was nursing or whatever. And Diamond, I could tell then that that child was going to be a go-getter. Because when she was hungry, she let the whole house know. And Brina, I don't care what she was doing, she had to go accommodate Diamond. <laughs> I thought about how that scripture says, as newborn babes desire. Hope you have a craving. I hope you like go through withdrawals because you, you, you yearn and desire and draw from the word of God. And that's why I love coming here in the morning, 6 a.m. And I want to keep talking about this subject, which I believe is life changing. I believe that God has taken us to another level of faith because a faith mindset is a kingdom mindset. And you cannot think of faith apart from the context in which it is to be applied. And that is as it relates to the reign of God, the kingdom of God. It is within his divine purpose that we operate in faith. Faith is not for us. It's for our purpose. It's for our calling. It is to equip us to do what we are called to do. And so we've got to change how we view our relationship with God and specifically how that relating to God is relating to a kingdom. And I said, the kingdom of God is, is the spiritual reality. It is the realm of reality. It is the spiritual dimension. It is this dualism, as we told you, where you have the physical realm, you have the spiritual realm. And one of the things the Holy Spirit is doing right now is he's making us aware. He's making us conscious. And, and there's a verse of scripture in John, the 14th chapter, and the sixth verse. And I just want to read that verse. Now, typically, I always share with you the context. But because I just want to use it to jump off, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. But I do want you to look at these three things, okay? There are three things that Jesus says about himself. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Way truth, life. I'm going to talk about that. Now, let me get a little context because I got to gotta explain, you know, John 14, the disciples are suffering from separation anxiety. Very upset for the fact that Jesus is talking about physically leaving them. He keeps telling them, I'm not really leaving you. I'm just physically leaving you. They can't grasp that. They can't understand that. All they ever have known about death is that when you die, you don't interact with that person anymore. Jesus said the interaction is going to go up. The level of intensity with which we interact is going to go to a level way beyond it has been. This is going to be better. I'm going to be a more improved, uh, in a more improved state of connection to you. I'm going to be closer to you than I've ever been before. I've been with you, but I'm going to be in you. I got to remember, Pastor told me, she said, 
why do you lean forward when you sit back? <laughs> Honey, I'm gonna sit back. I'm sorry. I think it's because I get excited, you know, like, and you know, and then <laughs> I gotta remember that this is a Zoom call, okay? Sit back. Thank anyway, you, thank you, thank you. Y'all better pray. Y'all better pray for Pastor S, number one. But number two, thank God for Pastor S for helping me be normal. But anyway, uh, he says, I am the way, I'm the truth and the life. And as I was reading that uh, this morning at 2 a.m., <laughs> just spoke to me. He said, he say, Jesus was trying to get them to understand the nature of how he would relate to them in fulfilling that purpose. And all they were thinking about was how they was going to miss Jesus. And it was one of those things they could not really explain until they experienced it. Have you ever had somebody try to tell you something and you couldn't grasp it, but after you started to get in the situation or experience it, then you understood what they were talking about. I think that's one of the things that was going on right here is that uh, because when you look in the scriptures, when you read the scriptures, you know, there's never an instance where the disciples ever missed Jesus. They ever like said anything in a way where they wished, regretted the fact that he had uh, physically left them. You know why? Because he was so real. He was so close. They interacted with him in such an intimate and close way. I mean, how can you miss somebody who you feel in you and know so well and interact with on such an intimate and intense way? And so that's what God intended for us. Amen. Even though we never had the experience of being in the natural, physical, we never got to sit down and see Jesus in the flesh. Of course, that was a good thing as far as Jesus was concerned when he told Thomas, he said, blessed are they who have not seen and they believe. He said, they're going to be better off than you because you got to try to fight off what you had. They never had it. They're going to all, they're going to step into the best. And so they're not going to miss what was inferior. But whatever the case, he says three things. God said to me, these are the three things that are most important. He says, the kingdom mindset involves three things. First of all, and this is a little out of order, but it involves a consciousness of spiritual reality, um, which is truth. It involves a spiritual perspective on how things are constituted which is the way. And it involves a spiritual disposition that you adopt, which is the life. Jesus said he is the way, meaning he provides spiritual perspective. He is the truth because he provides consciousness of spirituality. He is the life because he's the resource of spiritual experience and power. I want to talk about this because it's so important in the last couple of Sundays and teachings, I've been trying to emphasize to you that you have to be aware of the realm of the spirit and that you are living on earth, but you also have entered into a kingdom you live in a spiritual reality, a spiritual world, a spiritual dominion, a spiritual environment, a spiritual space. That's something you have to be aware of. That's something that you carry and you live with. It's like you're walking around in this earth like today you're going to go to work or you're going to go to, but at the same time, you're navigating through a spiritual space. And it's like you're in the world, but you really aren't of this world. 
You are like Peter says, a pilgrim and a sojourner. And as I've said, we're in the flesh, but we're not of the flesh. We're of the spirit. It's like we're human beings, but we're at the same time, first and foremost, spiritual beings. And there are human things that we relate to, but the main thing we relate to are spiritual things. In other words, we see things with our eyes, but we really sense things with our spirit. And so when you're born again, um, you enter into a realm, a kingdom. That's why the difference between a person that is saved and a person that's not saved is that a person that's not saved is only in the flesh. That's all they can be. But when you are born again, you have entered into the kingdom of God, the reign of God, the reality of God. You see things, sense things, know things that are of a spiritual nature, of a spiritual con content. And that's what equips you. That equips you to live life and life more abundantly. That is your great advantage. Your spiritual faculties are what enable you to overcome, to prevail. I mean, it's like you are equipped to live. Why? Because you're not limited by physical stimulus or physical uh, sources. You have this other source. You have spiritual power. That's beyond your mental and your physical power. You got spiritual capacities, spiritual giftedness. And so as we are walking in the spirit, I mean, literally, we are walking, navigating, drawing by the spirit. That's why we always have hope. We can always be confident. We cannot encounter a situation where we cannot overcome. It is impossible for you to fail because your spiritual faculties enable you to have an advantage over anything you encounter. Don't get me wrong. You can be overwhelmed in the natural. You can come to the end of your rope. You can face something that's greater than you. But because you have access to the unlimited resources of God because of your spiritual conditioning and because your ability to bind and loose, your ability to call those things that be not as though they were, because you have the ability to use and apply the name of Jesus, because you have a that an inheritance that's incorruptible, undefiled, and fades not away. Because you have the Holy Ghost and power, <laughs> you can't lose. You can't be beaten. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And our faith in God is a faith in all that he has done to provide for everything that we need. And so we are in a place. Do you understand me? You are in a place. You are in the reign of God. You're under his authority. He is calling the shots. He is absolutely in control. He is enforcing his rule, his laws. See, people need to realize they need to leave you alone. Don't fool with you because you're a citizen of the kingdom. They don't realize that when they mess with you, the king is going to come to your assistance. I mean, it's just not wise. I mean, it's just not wise to, to, to try to oppose you and attack you. That's because they're in another kingdom and they don't see your angels. They don't know there's a hedge of protection around you. They don't know that there is a blessing on you. And if they knew, they would, they would leave you alone. 
If they saw your angel, if God ever opened up their eyes and they saw the angel, they would take off and run. They would be so intimidated by you. When you come around, they would run in the other office. <laughs> but because they aren't in the kingdom and they cannot see, they think you just oh, or somebody else, which is okay. They can think whatever they want to think about you. Key is you don't think whatever way about yourself. But you're not aware of who you are. And you're not aware that you're on assignment. And you not be aware how much power you have, how much authority you have. That's the problem. The problem is you let them define you instead of being defined by what the Bible says is true about me. Because I am not normal. And I know I might not look like much, but I'm packing power. I have anointing. <laughs> no weapon that's formed against me will prosper. When you try to do something to me, what happens is it does not complete its task. When you attack me, you know what happens? God neutralizes it. He would say when the enemy came up like a flood, and then they stumbled. It was like they was just ready to pounce. And then the Lord took his foot out and they stumbled and they fell. He said, though an host shall encamp against me. <laughs> and this will I be confident. Hallelujah. One thing. Y'all get me preaching up in here. One thing that I've desired of the Lord. And that will I seek out that I might dwell. Let me explain something to you. You are dwelling in a place of security. Do you understand me? The Lord is your shelter. He is your fortress. You let the devil, let all these people bark and growl and threaten and say they're going to do shut and shut. But listen, there is this massive obstruction between you and them. I know they can't see it, but make sure you know it. Make sure you understand you can't touch me. You can't hurt me. Whatever you do is going to do nothing but benefit me. You understand? Let me explain something. I haven't got to Colossians yet. Because I'm going to tell you my favorite verse in Colossians. My favorite verse in Colossians. I got to get through Ephesians. Which I'm going to give you some more stuff. Because Paula says she ain't see it. So I'm going to dump all Ephesians on you. <laughs> But Colossians says, you have been delivered from the power of darkness. You have been moved out of the fray of the power of darkness, the influence of darkness. It can't reach you. You're no longer in a place where you're under the threat of darkness. When I say darkness, the kingdom of the devil, evil, wickedness. All right? Demons. You've been delivered. Not only that, but then a translation took place. Whoa, I tell you. <laughs> you weren't just delivered, but then you were transferred. You, you were shifted. You were brought from a place to a new place. You were translated where? Into the kingdom. The kingdom. This is the kingdom of God. So I guess what I'm saying is you live in a body. But you are a living spirit. Do you hear me? You, you are a, a part of a, a part of a world, a spiritual world. And uh, you have eternity and you are eternal. You uh, you have everlasting life. <laughs> see people in the world are trying 
to get life, doing things to get yours springs up from within. A lot of times you laugh and you don't even, they say, what you laughing about? Man, I just, I just feel life. <laughs> you remember when you used to have to do something? You had to do something. You had to go get drunk. You had to go to the party. You had to go, 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 go. Now you could be just sitting home. People say, how was your weekend? Oh, I had a great weekend. And then he said, well, what did you do? Man, I stayed home and I prayed. I read the word. Let me tell you, I went to church. God just blessed me. And they're looking at you like, that was your weekend? <laughs> But they just don't know. They just don't know. You don't have to go nowhere and do nothing. The Lord is your life. <laughs> you know, um, people who don't know God, you know where they're headed to? Destruction. They're going to perish. That's why they got to have a bucket list. That's why they got to try to try to do all they can before they die. That's why the thought of death is something they don't even want to think about because then it's going to be all over. But you know, with you, the path of the just is like a shining light and it's getting brighter and brighter the perfect day. And oh, I, was, I, was, I was reading one other day about heaven. I, I don't think much about heaven, you know, but I don't know in my devotions, the Lord said to me, he said, you know, heaven's going to be a really great place. He said, when I say that scripture about I have not seen the ear, have not heard the things that I prepared for those who love him. He said, heaven is a prepared place. And he said, think about it. Now, if you had time to prepare, you could really put some really good together for Pastor S. I mean, you could really come up with something if you put your mind to it. That's the problem. Put my mind to it. But imagine if the eternal God the omniscient, all-knowing God, if he has eternity and thousands and thousands of years to figure out what he wants you to have, can you imagine what he's going to come up with? <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell you, and he knows you intimately. I was like, whoa. Then he says, not just in heaven, but even now. He said, I got some stuff I've been in the, I've been in some stuff that I'm planning. My mother was a prolific cook. My mother could cook. Man, she could cook. And when she would be cooking, the food would be smelly. And I was so obnoxious because I keep coming in. And Ma, is it ready? She said, child, get out my kitchen. Child, I'll call you when you're ready. <laughs> like, but Ma, that smell. <laughs> Could you cook it without that smell? Because, see, I'm going to wait when I got that smell. I want you to know something. Amen. The smell of what's coming. Hallelujah. Ought to make you have high expectations because as good as my mom could cook, nobody can prepare like God. Oh, I'm just chasing a rabbit right now. Let me get back to my point. You see, you need to be aware of the spiritual realm and you need to be have a spiritual perspective and, and a spiritual reality. Now, let me just talk about these three things. Amen. I want to talk about these three things. I'm glad this is on tape because I might not get all of it, but I do want you to go away here with your head screwed on right. You got to have your spiritual head screwed on right. You got to know what you should be focused on. You should know what this is all about. And you ought to operate in a realm of reality that allows you to understand how you are constituted and how you fit in the grand scheme of things. I need you to know your significance. I need you to understand what your purpose is. I need you to recognize that you're not just here floating around and one day you die. No, there are spiritual goals, objectives. There is a plan. There is a way in which you have been shaped, prepared. You have been equipped. There is an ultimate prize 
and high calling that God has for you, I need you to stop feeling significant. I need you to realize you are one of God's prized possessions. You are salt of the earth. You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation to show forth the praises of him that call you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I need you to realize you are in a kingdom and you're in a kingdom for a reason and that your life is not just reacting to things as they come up and trying to deal with stuff as things happen. No, everything going in your life is a related to what God is doing in you what he's doing through you and ultimately what he's doing for you and really you have a role you have a a purpose as a matter of fact when you get locked in on that it won't matter what people are doing or what's happening around you because really it's not about being in an ideal position or being in an ideal circumstance it's about doing and fulfilling what God is doing for you and through you. I mean, financial things are not just about me getting money. It's about God showing me how to trust him and rely on him and allow him to supply my needs, not because I work hard, but because he is my source. When the enemy attacks your physical body, as opposed to you being worried about to get to a place where you realize this is an opportunity for God's glory to be manifested. And when you come under attack or you find yourself in an adverse circumstance, instead of feeling ashamed and feeling like you're depressed and I can't believe this happened to me, you understand this is a time to count it all joy because this is God's opportunity to make me shine and for people to know that I am the real deal and for them to to glorify my father, which is in heaven. Oh my, it changes your spiritual perspective. Three things, your spiritual consciousness, your spiritual perspective, and your, your overall life experience, way, truth, and life. This is what Jesus said. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What are the three things when God saves you? What are the three things that he does for you? First of all, he shows you the way because without him, you're lost. When I say lost, you're roaming around aimlessly. You're not really knowing where you're going. You don't know where you are. You, you don't even have a sense of why you're here. You're just basically lost. That's the saddest part about being not being a Christian is you're just living or walking around, but you don't really have any sense of why and what. And it's and, and but Jesus said, I am the way, I give you direction, guidance. Secondly, you know, truth. Without truth, you're confused. I mean, stuff doesn't make sense. You're constantly getting frustrated because you don't realize what's going on and you don't understand why things are happening. And you know. That's the other thing about not knowing the Lord is you can't have a grasp about where you're going, what's happening. I mean, it's just very just disconcerting and disorient to just be reacting to things, having things happen. So Jesus said, I am the truth. I give you a sense of what in the world is going on and how things are constituted. And 30 says, he says, life, that means without him, you're dead, you're disconnected, you're basically um, lifeless, okay, you don't really have anything to pick you up, you don't have anything that can sustain you, you're basically just constantly in a state of need, of lack, of deficiency, and then it's just I mean, I'd say by the time you are hmm, 30 years old, maybe 40 years old, you've experienced everything that life has. I mean, there's not much left. Everything you're doing at that point is repeat. I mean, <laughs> as much fun as it might have been when you first did it, you can't get that much from it like you did before. 
because that's the way carnal things are. They, the, the, the thrill of it fades away. Even when you get your first car, oh man, you like ah, a new car smell. I mean, you're like so excited. You ride around with your friends. You know, this is my car. Man, don't be eating in my car. You know, how many cars have you bought now? I mean, you know, do you have that same feeling? It's like, oh man, I got a new car. Really? Yeah, that's great. Got Roy Rogers cups in there and everything. <laughs> I mean, but guess what? When you are in Jesus, Jesus allows for your life experience to get better and better as life goes on. Here I am 65 years old and my experience is better than it could have ever been at 25. Why? Because every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Though my outward man perished, my inward man is renewed day by day. You know, I look at people, you know, people who don't know the Lord and they just try their best to have fun. I ain't got to try. It springs up from within. And so the way is the perspective really has to do with the way of thinking. Okay, your way of thinking. And then truth is your consciousness and awareness. And, and, and especially your awareness of how you are part of a kingdom. Man, I tell you, it's just so important that today I want you to keep reminding yourself. I want you to look around and realize that I'm a king. And I'm a priest. I need you to realize that this is your world because you are a part of the kingdom. I can't tell you you're not an American citizen. I, mean, I can't go up to you and tell you what well, you don't have rights. You're like, what are you talking about? I was born here. I, I didn't have to get my citizenship. I am a citizen. <laughs> And just like the American citizens in Sudan, when they were having that civil war, what did the American government do? The American government went and got them. They sent them soldiers over there, man, and they put them gut. Because let me tell you something. When you are a citizen of the king, the king is going to come get you. And you better not mess with one of the citizens of the kingdom because you're going to incur the wrath. He said, I'm greater than all, and no man can pluck me, pluck you from my hand. I keep leaning forward. I'm sorry. <laughs> stay back. Stay back. And so um, I guess what I'm saying is, is the way is how you think. Truth is the content of what you think. And life is... Um, Life is the purpose or meaning of what you think. And so I guess what I'm saying is that the three things, misperception of reality, okay, misinterpretation of reality, and misconception, difference between perception and conception, the misconception of reality. And as I was saying, um, the way has to do with your perspective. Your perspective on things, how you view things, your vantage point. We're talking about how you, uh, your, your, your frame of mind per se. You have to have a kingdom frame of mind, okay? And that is the way. And then the truth, we're talking specifically about seeing things the way they actually are and understanding truth as opposed to lies or illusions. The enemy, he operates in things that are absolutely false, not grit, okay? He's the deceiver. But when you walk in truth, you understand that, wait a minute here, this is the way things look, but this is not the way things are. I understand that that's what somebody's saying to me, 
but I know what God has said to me. I understand that this is the way things look in the natural, but we don't look to things which are seen. We look to things that are unseen. I'm going to be completely confident in what is going to happen. I have hope. I have hope. You know why I have hope? Because I'm not looking at my physical circumstances. I am sensing what God has spoken. Faith is the substance of things what hoped for. In other words, I expect things not from the natural. I expect things from the spirit. And so I am promised a way to look at anything that I have a perspective. And my perspective is victory. My perspective is based on the omnipotent power of God. I have a perspective on things where I never lose. I'm never disheartened. I'm never overwhelmed. I'm never at a loss. I'm not saying I don't have disappointments sometimes, but my perspective, even on my disappointment, is that God will allow me to overcome, to prevail. And sometimes the devil will throw a curve, but I'm just going to trust God will enable me to bring good even out of what seems unfortunate. You understand what I'm saying? You know, okay, let, let me go back up. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm saying a lot of it, but <laughs> I need you to be conscious of the spiritual realm. That's what we were talking about Sunday. And what we have been emphasizing here is the fact that we have got to have a kingdom consciousness. By that, I mean, you got to be aware of all that's at your disposal. You got to be aware of all that you have been promised, all that God has spoken, all that God has said. I need you to be conscious of the fact that you have a myriad of angels that are operating on your behalf. There is a force field, literally a force field of power. And when you move, they move with you. Amen. You have special rights and privileges under your citizenship as king. And he is very, very uh, mindful of what it is you need and whatever is going on in your life. And I need you to have a consciousness, a comprehension. I need you to be mindful of all that you have in Christ. And I need you to be conscious and aware of the spiritual, spiritual evidence and effect. And you know what? I'm running out of time. But I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to stop right here on consciousness. Amen. I need you to realize how many times that it has been God who has kept you, who has protected you, and who has provided for you. And I need you to realize, amen, that you are right now in and under the authority, power, protection, provision of the kingdom of God. I need you to realize that Things that are coming in your life are not coming from the natural realm. That's why I don't need you to be even concerned about how things look physically. I need you to realize that things are coming from the spiritual realm. I need you to realize that there are things headed your way. There are shifts taking place. I need you to expect not what you can see, but expect things that you can't see, that you don't know. And it's normal for God to bless you with things that you cannot conceive of or you even know of. As a matter of fact, I go so far as to say that most of the things God does in your life, you didn't even know to pray for. You didn't even know what to ask God for. I mean, you think that God didn't answer your prayer, but really you don't live off the prayers that you offer. Mostly what you live off are the prayer provision that God makes for you because you don't even know what to pray for as you are. The spirit 
knows what you need and he blesses you with things you didn't even know to ask for as a matter of fact if you really are honest with yourself most of the time when god blessed you you had no idea he could even bless you like that you had no idea he could even do what he did in your life i mean you were praying for what you were praying for god to do was so much less than what he has for you i mean you know, he has so much more for you than you even could even. Could. That's why he's able to do exceedingly abundant above all you could ever ask or think. You ever wonder why he says that? He says that because he wants you to understand that whatever you're asking and thinking is really far below what he's going to do in your life because you don't even know what's best. You don't even know how this is going to turn out. You don't know the long-term repercussions. See, you're just praying over some situation in your family, and you're just asking God to resolve something to happen, whatever that. But you know what God's thinking about? He's thinking about generations. He's thinking about your bloodline. He's talking about repairing the breach, removing familiar spirits out of your family bloodline out of your family. You're just thinking about local. He is thinking international. You're thinking about the immediate. He's thinking about the long-term impact and effect of your life. You're talking to somebody about their particular problem, and you're just trying to help them with some problem. God is healing whatever was the curse that was put on them from generations. You got to realize, stop thinking that what you can expect is based on what you can envision can need to happen. And don't get upset when God doesn't do what you thought he should have done or in the timing that you thought he should have done it. Because really, you got to trust the fact that he's all knowing. He knows what is best. And he's working all things around for your good, man. Let me tell you something. I need you to have a kingdom mindset. I need you to interpret situations from a spiritual perspective. In other words, I want you to look at things that are going on in your life, not from the perspective of I need to make it through this. Oh, Lord, give me the strength. Oh, Lord, help me. I need you to realize that this ain't nothing but a spiritual opportunity for you to break some yokes, to open some doors. You are an ambassador for Christ. You are a minister of reconciliation. You are the light of the world. You are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid. You are, let me tell you something. You are here but such a time as this. And there are evil things going on. There are evil people that are doing their mess, whatever. Don't be intimidated. Do not become overwhelmed by the wickedness that you experience from people. Don't sit there and say, oh man, they are so far. I need you to realize this is my assignment. And I'm going to tell you something. After I get finished drawing from the spiritual realm, after I finish calling on the name of Jesus, after I finish interceding, after I finish using my authority in the name of Jesus, amen, I am going to put this spirit to rest. This spirit, after they cross me, are not going to continue doing what they are doing. You understand me? people get on a job and you run into some evil spirits first thing you want to do is go to another job no you go to another job after you finish and you say well what's when i finish I don't... no you finish when you neutralize those powers you bring peace in the midst of that confusion you bind them bullies and them foul spirits i'm not saying get to fighting i'm not saying get to yelling and because <laughs> you're gonna get fired what i am saying is draw upon your spiritual resource you're not there just to make money. You are there to establish and enforce all authority and power has been given unto me. Go ye therefore. You know, understand me? You go and you invade. You're not going on a job. You're invading. When you step in there, God's presence is there. His kingdom is there. His reign is there. Amen. And you stop being passive. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. It's time to take some things. It's time to decide I'm not having this crap in my family. You know what? I, I am not going to allow in my spiritual space any demons operate working. They're going to have to go somewhere else because this is my territory. This is my space. This is my country. This is my city. If my people, 
who call by my name will humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways and seek my faith. Then will I hear from heaven. And guess what? I'm going to heal the land. God ain't depending on no government, no president. He ain't depending on no Supreme Court. He's not depending on our army. He's dependent on his people who are called by his name. And you got to look, look, there's some stuff you've tolerated. There's some things you've allowed. There's some situations that you sat there back and say, man, that don't make no sense. No, take it personal. Devil, you treading on what God has assigned me to do. And I'm going to tell you one thing. This situation ain't nothing but a setup. This is a setup. This is an opportunity. This, this is something God has put me here, and there's a reason why I'm here. And I ain't trying to run, escape. I ain't looking for no, no relief. The person that's going to need some relief is the devil himself. And those demons will be brought into subjection to the truth of God's word. Amen. I want the devil, when I wake up, to say, oh, no, he's up again. Amen. <laughs> Man, I'm getting you fired up, ain't I? <laughs> See, you, you got to understand that God wants you to look at things from the perspective of how you have been assigned and appointed. Do you know one of the reasons why your family is so dysfunctional is because that's a part of your calling. And you are called to be a repairer of the breach. Do you hear me? You're going to end some long-standing familiar spirits that have run rampant in your family. Thank God you got saved. Thank God God delivered you. But it's not just about you. It's about the washing. The washing of regeneration. You know what that means? That means God can go back into the effects of evil implantations in the chromosomes, in the genetics, in the evil conditioning and terrible infiltration of demonic spirits. Regeneration is to wash in, to wash out all those foreign and evil spirits and renew them and renew them in what the Holy Ghost Y'all ain't with me up in here. I gotta. <laughs> you see, when I'm in the spiritual reality, I realize that all I need is revelation. That's all I need. All I need is the truth. All I need is for God to talk to me. I'm dependent on his word. Live by every breath. And you know what? The more word, the more healed I am, the more healthy I am, the wholeness. This is mental health month. Let me tell you, nothing is better for you than Jesus and his means of bringing wholeness, healing is his word. Amen. Truth makes you free. Your mind is renewed. What? By the word of God. Psalms 119, 105. Man, run out of time. Let me see how much time I got. Well, I got 10 minutes. Yes, sir. I got 10 minutes. Man, let me God tell you. All I need is five. He says, that word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Proverbs 6.23 says, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, my words are spirit and my words are life. Hallelujah. And you got to rely on the spirit. You hear me today? I need you to rely and sense the spirit. I need you to Ask the Holy. I mean, let me tell you something. You can talk to the Holy Ghost like I'm talking to you right now. Amen. You can do it. Let me tell you, and He will talk to you. He will respond to you. I mean, stop being logical and reasonable and stop thinking, you know, what am I going to do about this? Just say, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, what should I do about this? Holy Ghost, what should I say to that person? The flesh, like, you should tell them, no, no, I ain't listening to you, flesh. Say, so, Holy Ghost, what should I do? I'm, I'm going by what I sense. Not what I see. Matter of fact, when God changes you from the spirit to the flesh, you see good things and things that you thought were bad. Instead of challenges being something that, def that deflates you and makes you feel sad, 
Now challenges are opportunities. Now you're like, whoa, you start licking your chops. You say, oh, devil, okay, I, I got you. You about to go down. Amen. You know, you know how you know somebody who is a champion, they like competition. You know, they like the opportunity to compete. Amen. And when the enemy comes up to them, they're like, oh, so you want oh, you 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 want you want to try to do something? Okay, good. Let's do it. As as opposed to saying, Oh, no, here I go again. You're not a failure. You're not defeated. You do not have a long list of not. No, you are an overcomer. Let me explain something to you. You don't overcome without coming over. I mean, that's your identity. Your identity is not that you don't have things happen. It's just that you overcome everything that happens. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And I don't even see what the devil's doing as something I feel deflated or upset about. He doesn't upset me anymore at all. I ain't worried at all about what he does. I'm not sitting and waking in the morning. Oh, I hope everything goes okay. I know it don't matter whichever way it comes. I'm coming over. But my nature, my identity is I am an overcome. What did Paul say? What? shall separate me from the love of Christ, your neck in this perilous sword. He said, nay, in all these things, I'm more than a conqueror. He said, I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angel, nor things present, nor things that come, nor any other creation shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the Lord Jesus who causes me to triumph in every situation. You hear me there? I'm getting excited. I got I to gotta push back. <laughs> Listen, I'm sending you out. I'm sending you out with aggression, with determination. I'm sending you out with the mentality and mindset. Devil, you about to have a bad day. You know, you used to give me bad days. But now I'm not receiving, I'm dishing out. And I'm going to neutralize you at every point. I'm binding and loosening. Matter of fact, everybody that comes in contact with me about to get blessed. Amen. People might be having a hard day, but when they run up against me, they're going to get hope. They're going to know. Hallelujah. And even my enemies, even the people that are trying to do me harm, guess what? I'm looking forward because I will be vindicated. As a matter of fact, I thank God he's preparing the table before me right there in the presence of my enemies. I'm getting my food ready. I'm going to eat good. And they're going to have to watch me eat because what they thought was my demise was just the basis of my rise. I done got the, I got, got the rhyme in now. I got the rhyme in now. <laughs> Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this morning, man. Because, Lord, you want me to become conscious that this is a spiritual world. Help me to realize they that are with us are more than they are in the world. Thank you that I'm blessed. Can't nobody curse me because when they curse, what comes out of their mouth is blessing. Amen. Everything that they do for evil is turning around for my good. Why? Because of the place I'm in. I'm in the kingdom and I'm under a king. And he reigns, he rules, he super rules. He's my source. Hallelujah. He's my way. He is my reality, my truth. And he is my life experience. Thank you, Lord. Allow us to walk around today with a kingdom mindset. We own this world. This is our domain. As long as we are here, we are the lights of the world. Thank you. In Jesus' precious name. Help us to remember you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. In the name of Jesus, amen. Man out. Amen. <laughs>